بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين حبيب إله العالمين خير البرية نبي الرحمة سيد المرسلين إمام المتقين رحمة العالمين مفتاح الجنة صاحب الحوض والكوثر النبي الأمي العربي المكي المدني القرشي الهاشمي العبد المؤيد والرسول المسدد والمصطفى الأمجد والمحمود الأحمد أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على وآل محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من يوم عداوتهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الحكيم وهو أستق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم والله غفور رحيم آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على دعاء محمد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته I begin in the name of Allah, the most kind, the most merciful. It's due to that kindness and mercy that we have these opportunities where we gather in remembrance and glorification of Him, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. We then send our congratulatory messages to our 12th and living Imam, Al Hujjah Jalallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif, as we gather on this evening to celebrate the birth anniversary of two important and beautiful figures in Islam, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala din wa ali Muhammad and our sixth holy imam of Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi afdalu salatu wa salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we can each get an opportunity to go for the ziyarat of them in Medina, insha'Allah, and that we receive their shafa'at in the hereafter, insha'Allah. As has been announced, insha'Allah, that we will try to play a game after the lecture, insha'Allah. You know, there has been, since the period of Azhar came to an end, I can't tell you the number of youth who have come up. And really straightforward, Sheikh. Just another lecture today. <laughs> and I was like, that's all I got for you, you know. But I said, wait, today, inshallah, we'll try to play a game. So, inshallah, the plan is a short lecture, a short game. Together, we'll have a long lecture all together, inshallah. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad. So yes, do have your phones ready for your kids and for yourselves. I think the menti code is put on the board. If I'm not mistaken, I can't see, but feel free to log in. But do pay attention to what I'm about to say as well, inshallah. You know, there is no way that we can do true justice in no matter how much time we have to these two great personalities, you know. Um, but we rely on this hadith that I, that I quote as often as I can in, these, in this particular gathering in which we feel content and secure to know that if we talk about one of them, we're talking about both of them. There's a hadith quoted by our sixth Imam al-Sadiq alayhi afdalu salatu wa salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Where he's reported to have said, Nahnu umanaullah. He says, we are the trustees of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani we as in 
the Ahlul Bayt alayhim as salam. It says, we are the trustees of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala khalqihi, of, of His creation. They have been assigned this rulership, this governorship to look after the people. He says, وَخَلْقَنَا wahid." Our creation is one. وَعِلْمَنَا wahid," And our knowledge is one. وَفَضْلُنَا wahid," And our merits are one. وَكُلُّنَا wahid in the Allah. And all of us are one with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he concludes this by saying, أَوَّلُنَا Muhammad, وَأَوْسَطُنَا Muhammad." وَآخِرُنَا مُحَمَّدٌ اللَّهُمَّ صَلِّ عَلَى Muhammad. Hence when we talk about one, we are talking about all. And so today what I want to spend just a few minutes talking about is that one of the titles of our Prophet. You know, our Prophet has many titles, many great glories that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself has praised the Prophet with. But one of the titles that he's been given that we affectionately call him by that is found in many ziyarat is the title of him being Habibullah yeah? the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is a very beautiful title you know it's a very powerful title there are many traditions that have this title as one of his titles but also we recite it in in ziyarat for example in ziyaratul warith you know we start the beginning of the ziyarat what do we say assalamu alayka ya waritha adama Safwatillah, right? That salam to the one who is the inheritor of Adam, who is the chosen one of Allah. Assalamu alayka ya waritha nuhin, Nabiyillah. And we continue and then we come to Assalamu alayka ya waritha Muhammadin, Habibullah. Yeah, the salam to the one who is the inheritor of Muhammad, the Habib of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to talk about what is the significance of this title, okay? And what does it mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala considers him to be his Habib, to be his beloved? And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him this title, exactly what does he want us to understand from this title? Inshallah, we'll get there. But to understand the importance of being called the beloved of Allah, the Habib of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to understand what is it what is the concept of love in Islam yeah and the importance of the of the concept of love you know there are many concepts that we have in Islam right we have the concept of Islam itself then we have the concept of iman then we have the concept of taqwa we have the concept of yaqeen but one of the concepts that is very important in Islam is the concept of love the concept of hub and there are many traditions that tell us its significance and its importance. For example, once a man comes up to our sixth Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam and he asks him, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. His name was Fudail bin Yasar and he narrates this tradition. He says, I asked the sixth Imam alayhi salam, anil hubbi wal bogh, about love and its opposite. We will call its opposite dislike, but you know the opposite of love. Yeah? He said, I asked the Imam about love and dislike. Amin al-Iman, is that part of Iman? Is that part of faith? To which the Imam salam replies back with and says, وَهَلِ iman illa al-hubbi wal He says, is Iman, faith, anything other than love and dislike? SubhanAllah. Yeah? It tells us that the whole of faith is built on the concept of love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a fascinating concept. You know, when we look at our obligations of tawalla and tabarra, it is a stem from the concept of love and dislike for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not wajibats that are, as we put them on a list, right? Sometimes, you know, I don't think we do this actively. But we look at this list and say Salah is number one, so it's the most important. Amr bil Maruf is number seven. So we sometimes say, well, he may not know. It's not a list based on priorities or importance, right? Tawalla and Tabarra is, is an important concept that is considered to be that glue that holds our faith together. What's interesting about the concept of love is that it's almost as though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, look, it's not enough that you have faith in me, right? I want you to love having faith in me. 
That's a different thing altogether, right? He wants us to be in love with Him. You know, it's not, it's not that He wants us to wake up for Fajr. That's okay, we've, you know, we wake up for Fajr, we, we have fulfilled the wajibat at that particular point. It feels good. It's like an like accomplishment naturally when we wake up for Fajr. But when we understand the concept of love in Islam, it's as though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to love waking up for Fajr for Him. That's something altogether different. That means you wake up with excitement for God. You know when you love something, we would run through fire for the person that we love. Yeah? We would do whatever is necessary for the person that we love or the things that we love. Allah says, love me in that way. Yeah? Do things for me based on the concept of love. And this is where we see His power. The question is why, right? Like why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want this level of love from us? It's a beautiful understanding. You know, one of my favorite traditions that shows why love is so important, it's a conversation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has with Nabi Musa alayhi wa ala nabiyyina wa alihi afdalu salatu wa salam Allahum li ala muhammadin wa ali muhammad He says to Nabi Musa, now we keep in mind, you know, sometimes when we hear the stories of Nabi Musa, our reaction is like, bichara Musa, yeah, like poor Musa, you know, Musa alayhi salam serves as this example, but Musa is an ulul azam, yeah he is not anywhere like, like me in any sense. He is one of the greatest creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah shows a lesson for us through him, you know, and through all of the prophets. He says to Musa, who has done whatever he wants, who has challenged Fir'aun, who has done all of these things. Allah says to Nabi Musa alayhi salam, Ya Musa, hal amilta li amalan qat? He says, Oh Musa, have you done anything for me in your life? This is Musa, yeah? This is not a normal human being, right? He says, have you done anything for me in your life? And so look at the jawab of Musa. It is an answer that I think maybe we think we will give to God on the Day of Judgment. He says, Ya Rabbi, Sallaytu lak, wa sumtu lak, wa tasaddaqtu lak. And he continues, he says, I prayed for you. I fasted for you, I gave sadaqah for you, I gave zakat for you. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala replies back, He says, Amma salata falaka burhanun. He says, Musa, this salah is a proof for you, it does nothing for me. Yeah? He says, this fasting is a junna, is a protection for you on the day of judgment, it does nothing for me. Was sadaqa dhillun, and sadaqa will serve as a Shadow for you on the day of judgment does nothing for me. Was zakatu nurun and zakat is a light for you. So he says, Again, I ask you, for ayu amalin amil tali ya Musa. So, what have you done for me, Musa? Yeah? And this is where we see the humility of Musa. He says, Ya Allah, dullini ala al amali ladi huwa lak. He says, Tell me, what is the action? Show me the action that is specific for you. And he says, Ya Musa, Hal wa li waliyan wa adayta li aduan? Have you loved someone for my sake? And have you disliked someone for my sake? Yeah? That means you put your own feelings aside. Yeah? But just because God wants it, and the love that we have for God is such that we do whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. This is why then Musa ends this tradition. He says, Fa'alima Musa. That Musa understood That the best action a human being can do Is to love for the sake of Allah And to dislike for the sake of Allah You want to know why hub is so important? Because hub is an ultimate demonstration Of devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's the ultimate demonstration of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I may like things, I may love things, but when God says, I don't like this thing, no matter how much attachment I have to that, I put that aside simply for my love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad. Ma salli ala Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad. So let's understand how love works. Okay, 
any positive qualities, we have established the importance of hub, the importance of love. Any positive quality that we have must be naturally emitting from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a philosophical concept, okay? That it's not possible for that which is recognized and accepted and understood as a positive quality for it not to be present in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He is the giver of all qualities, right? Um, and so hub is one of those qualities that we understand its importance. God has described for its importance. Therefore, love starts with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why one of his names is that he is, he is what? Habib, right? He is Habib. This is why Allah is Habib. He is Muhib. Muhib has different meanings, meaning the one who is loved, Mahbub, and the one who does the loving. This is who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. But how does God's love work? Now pay attention to this. God's love starts with His love for Himself. Okay? Um, again, like just pay attention to this part. Then you can doze off for 10 minutes and come back again, inshallah. Yeah? But pay attention to this. Okay? The primary love is God's love for Himself. Now, what does that mean? Right? Love, we love, what is love, right? Like, what do we love? We love something. And just pay attention. We love to something. We love something that we perceive and recognize within that thing qualities of perfection and beauty. Correct or no? Right? We love that thing in which we can recognize and perceive and understand within that thing that there are qualities of perfection and beauty in that thing. Because no one loves that which is imperfect. No one loves that which is not pleasant, not beautiful. Now, what we think is beautiful changes from person to person. Sometimes even people who have bad vices, why do they love those vices? Because at that moment, they think that there is some form of beauty in that vice. It gives them certain pleasure, and so they are attracted to that. But as, as insan, as human beings, or just in general, we only love that which we perceive within it, qualities of perfection and beauty, okay? There is no one more beautiful and more perfect than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Agreed? And His ability to perceive and understand His own beauty and perfection is the highest form of perception that there is. Hence, His love for Himself is the greatest as well. You get that or no? Yeah? It's important. It's really a beautiful concept. Okay, loving oneself, hubbu that is a naturally occurring phenomenon. We've touched upon that in so many lectures, right? But the way it's a naturally occurring phenomenon is because it begins with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. His ability to recognize his own perfection is far greater than any other creation. Hence, his love for himself is the greatest. Okay. Then this love that is with God, he then shares it with people. Okay? The way God is merciful, He shares His mercy with people. God is loving, He shares His love with people. The categories of love that God gives to His people fall into three categories. The first category is general love. General love, now don't we just, it, it, can't, be, it can't be trivialized. This love is still very powerful. It's through this love that God provides to every creation, be they believers or not, it doesn't matter. God will provide for them, sustain them, nourish them. Why? Because God loves His creation. Never think that God dislikes His creation. It's the creation that turns away from God. God doesn't do that, right? And so there's this general love that every creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enjoys. Then there is a second category of love, which is a special love. This special love are for those who reciprocate their love back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? You understand or no? These are, for the, these are for us, we can say, the believers, who do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do. All right? They take care of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to be taken care of. And how do we know what He loves? It's not a mystery. When we read the Qur'an, the Qur'an is full of examples of the things that God loves. For example, Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ التَّوَّابِينَ 
وَيُحِبُّ الْمُتَطَّهِرِينَ God loves those who turn back to Him and God loves those who are in a state of cleanliness. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَّقِينَ God loves the God conscious. وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ He loves those who do good. وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الصَّابِرِينَ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُعْوَلُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ What's interesting here, so there are many examples of the things that he loves. But when it comes to the things that he does not love, and he does not like, he doesn't say, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْغِذُ He doesn't say Allah dislikes, detests these things. He still comes from the perspective of love. He says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُعْتَدِينَ it's a very beautiful way. He doesn't like those who are, who are unjust to others. Yeah, it's a very beautiful way, right? Like when you when you love somebody and you you can say I dislike this, or you say Baba, I really don't like when you do this. There's a difference in that. Yeah? And look at the way God talks to us. Yeah, Inna Allaha wallahu la yuhibbul fasad, wallahu la yuhibbul zalimin. So many times in the Quran. Allah tells us very specifically that which He loves and that which He does not love. For the people who follow this to the T and say, you know what? I am going to follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and I am going to not do that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love. They earn this second category of love which is known as the special love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then there is a third category, okay? Now again, I told you, you can doze off, come back, come back here, okay? The third category of love, Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, yeah? Please, sit. <laughs> have a seat, please. So then have a seat and look at it, please. You, yeah, shukran. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad The third category of love Now this is where it's really important This is the perfect love that God gives Okay, so we said there is a general love Then there is a special love Then there is a perfect love Now when we say the perfect love This is the love that God gives in its perfect form. Now this is not all the love that God has, of course not, right? But this is all the love that one has the capacity of handling. It's a big difference, yeah? God's love is there. Sometimes because of our own actions, we, don't, we are not ready to absorb this love of God. But there are certain individuals who can take all the love that God is sending down for them. Now we had said, okay? that love is given or love is felt for that in which we can understand qualities of perfection and beauty in that thing. Understood? That's what we said love was. There are people who because of their perfection and beauty that God recognizes, He sends more love towards them. And there has not been a more perfect and more beautiful human being than Rasulullah. Hence, the love that God sends to the Prophet is the most perfect and most kamal form of love, which is why Rasulullah is known as Habibullah. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala. Ya Ali. You understand why he is called Habibullah? That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls him Habibullah, if we understand the concept of love, is because Allah is telling us that the perfection in him is so great that there is no one more beloved to me than that individual. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. What is our takeaway from this? Right? Our takeaway from this is. That we, alhamdulillah, insha'Allah, are amongst those people who receive the general love of God. We do. Because we are alive. We are sustaining ourselves. Allah is sustaining us. We, are, we enjoy. That means we know that the general love of God is reaching us. 
And because of our belief, inshaAllah, we are also receiving the special love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there should be a desire within each and every one of us to receive the perfect love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? There should be. There should be a desire. And how do we attain this? By following the footsteps of the Prophet. You know, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Ali Imran, this is the verse we read in the khutbah. Verse number 31, he says, Qul, say, O Nabi Allah. So he's ordering the Prophet to say to us, to the people, In kuntum tuhibbun Allah, فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ Allah. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Yeah? He says that, say to them, if you desire to love Allah, if you should love Allah, then follow me. Follow who? Follow the Prophet. What will be the result of following the Prophet? يُحْبِبْكُمُ Allah. Allah will love you. Allah. Yeah? Allah will love you. We want that perfect love of God. We should want it. We should want it. The way to get this perfect love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through following the footsteps of Rasulullah. It's not a mystery to us. We have the plethora of knowledge available to us. It's time for us to submit our desires to that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants by following Rasulullah. And inshallah, inshallah, if we follow the footsteps of Rasulullah, we pray that when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He will also address us as Habibullah. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Now we play the game. Yeah? So thank you for your patience and understanding. We can go back to the screen. Short game. Ten questions, five questions on the Prophet and Imam alayhi salam, five general trivia questions just to get us excited. Take out your phones. Yeah. I know you've been itching to take out your phone. Take it out now, inshallah. And you can log in. <clears throat> no dad jokes today, yeah? None whatsoever. Because you know dad jokes are so much easier when it's done online. You know, because I don't get to see your rolling of the eyes at my jokes. I just laugh myself, you know. So, so no dad jokes. And uh, no prizes either, really. Yeah? You know what the prize will be? The prize will be, same as it is many times, that the top ten, I will say a special prayer for you. Yeah? And I'm telling you, now this is just, as they say, hashtag humble brag. Yeah? Humble brag. My prayers are powerful, I'm telling you. I'll brag. Alaykum salam. Yeah? And so I'm just saying, I'm just saying, don't take it the wrong way. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. So we'll give it, oh nice, 75 people have logged in. Very cool. Yeah? Hmm? More than 70? Oh, only 75 are shown. Very cool. Oh, 122. Very cool. All right. So we'll give it 10 more seconds if we can recite. We can do the takbir, please. Yeah? Allahu Akbar. Ya Rasul Allah. Ya Ali. I always say, may Allah give Mushtaq by a long life, you know. I mean, because without him, we would be a very quiet mosque, you know. <laughs> All right, 139, 38, let's get started. We get started? All right. Ready? First question. Ooh, press enter. It's not working. It's not working. Oh, he went. Oh, answer fast. What was the name of the year that the Prophet was born? Look at your phone. Is it the year of the camel, the year of the mouse, the year of the elephant, or the year of the tiger? Yeah? The year, what is the name of the year that the Prophet was born? What's the answer? It is the year of the elephant. Amul Fil. Extra credit. 
just in my head. <laughs> what is the, the year number? 570. 570. Ah, centum, yeah? Very good. Let's see what the leaderboard looks like. Is there a lag on your screen too or no? Yeah? I don't know if I should click it again. Oh, leaderboard. There we go. Dark chocolate. Very nice. <laughs> leaderboard says we have Ya Nabi Salam Aleika. Very nice. Again, trying to get brownie points with me. Uh, R. Hussein, Ayan, Dark Chocolate, AYM, me, Hassan Ali. Khuddam uh, Fatima, AHP, and SFT. Very nice. Ready? Next question. What is the year of Imam al Sadiq alayhi salam's birth? Is it 40 AH, 61 AH, 83 AH, or 105 AH. Yeah, think about it. Yeah. I think I have to like press it really hard. Or something. Time's up. The answer is 83 AH. Yeah. Remember, 40 AH is when Imam Ali alayhi salam shahadat was. So the fourth Imam was born by that time. 61 AH is when what happened? Karbala. Yeah, the fifth Imam was born at that time. Hence, around 20 years later, it was 83 AH, and that is when our sixth Imam was born. Very good. Leaderboard. We have two Jafrilis on the board. Oh, we did. Yeah, we do. AH is on the lead, in the lead. Very nice. All right, next question. How old was the Prophet when Sayyidah Khadija alayhi salam and Hazrat Abu Talib alayhi salam left this world? Was he 35, 50, 62, or 40? How old was he when they left this world? What's the name of the year when they left? Amul Huzan. Yeah, the year of sadness, the Prophet called it because his two most loyal supporters left that world. He was 50 years old. Very good. Yeah, 35 was prior to Risala. 40 was the year of Risala. 62-63 was the year he left this world. And 50 is when they left this world. Very good. So let's look at the leaderboard. You playing? Yeah. Are you on the leaderboard? No. Ah, I taught you in madrasa. Come on. You should be on the leaderboard. <laughs> AH. I taught you Quran though. Alhamdulillah. Yeah? Zaidi. 1990. Nabil. MZS. Does that stand for something? Mandazis. No? Huh? Oh, that's you, Zaid. Very nice, Zaid. Triple A, Murtaza, Ali Rila, and Aoun. Very nice. Next question. Question number four. What does the name as Sadiq mean? The truthful, the trustworthy, the compassion, or the beloved? The compassionate, sorry. Truthful, trustworthy, the compassionate, or the beloved? The beloved means what? Allah. Habib Allah, yeah, the Habib. The answer is the truthful. Yeah, very good. Most people got it right. Very nice. All right, that's the leaderboard. Question number five. Which battle did the Prophet not fight in? Yeah. Is it Badr, Uhud, Khandak, or Siffin? Which battle did he not fight in? It's 
nice to see the young and old on their phones. No one's really old though. Just saying. Yeah. The answer is Safin. Yeah, he was present in all the other battles. And as the traditions tell us, it's very beautiful. You know, they say that when the battle got intense, Imam Ali says this is that we would go behind the Prophet and attack. Yeah. That's how bold he was. That's how powerful he was, right? Um, but very good, yeah? I think now the next five questions are all general trivia. So we gave you the religious questions first. I like your comments a little bit. Just a little bit. You're welcome. All right. Ali Radha came in with the fastest time. Vote GOAT. I don't know what that means. Are we talking about LeBron? No? Now we're talking about LeBron? We're we talking about LeBron? Yeah. <laughs> Question number six. What is the deadliest animal in the world? Lions, hippos, snakes, or mosquitoes? Deadliest to human beings. Is it lions, hippos, snakes, or mosquitoes? What is the deadliest animal in the world? The answer is mosquitoes. Yeah? Mosquitoes. Is that the <laughs> I love the audience cheering in the gym. Very nice, yeah? The audience in the hall is very quiet. But thank you for the audience in the gym. Lions, so I'll give you some numbers because I research these things. Lions kill approximately 250 humans a year. Hippos kill about 500. Snakes, anyone take a guess? Snakes? Yes. Around a thousand? Uh, close, it's in the thousands, but much higher thousand. 50,000. Yeah, snakes. And mosquitoes? A million, or 750,000 to a million, yeah, are killed by mosquitoes. So you know what, that much are done, you better come in handy soon, you know. Uh, we should, we're grateful, alhamdulillah, that we don't have, we're not bothered by it too much here, but it's better than any type of immunity there in Africa, isn't it? All right. Dad. Very good, dad. There's a dad there. All right, Nabil and Yusuf have taken the lead. Yusuf? Good job, buddy. What was it? <laughs> Question number seven. What is the most common gas in the atmosphere? <laughs> oh, I skipped the question. Sorry. Let's do it again. Can we do it again or no? Oh, we can't do it again? Oh, I'm so sorry, gentlemen and ladies. Let's try again. Inshallah, it will work. Oh no, sorry, <laughs> I ruined the board. The answer is nitrogen, nitrogen. I apologize, yeah, I have like itchy fingers here. Oxygen makes up 21% of the atmospheric gas. Nitrogen makes up, guess how much? A lot, 78% of gas, yeah. And then there's argon and then there's carbon dioxide. So again, my bad. It is what it is, yeah. Zainab Fatima Hussain was very fast, very nice. All right, I'll try not to press this too fast. Question number eight. Oh, you guys will like this. How many championships have the Raptors won? Seventeen. No, that's the Lakers, yo. Just wanted to put that in there. Yeah, just wanted to put that in there. Five, three, or one? One. Oh my God, one. Yeah? Not even Panjatan five, you know? Not even three, just one. That's the answer, one. I just wanted to rub that in. Yeah, just rub that in. And you're going to be like my age, Mahmoud Abbas, before you guys win another one, you know? <laughs> The 17 is the Lakers. Just wanted to add that, yeah? Just wanted to add that. <clears throat> so very good. One. You guys should remember the one. It only happened a few years ago when a bunch of players got injured in Golden State Warriors. <laughs> and then you guys won the championship. You remember? Like Clay Thompson went down and Durant went down. And oh my gosh. 
<laughs> uh, thank God everybody just leaves after the program now to hear it from anybody, you know. <laughs> All right, leaderboard is that. Rehan Bhai, if you can take a picture at the end for the leaderboard, I promised them I would pray for them. Question number nine. What is the national animal of India? Is it the Indian leopard, the elephant, the cow, or the Bengal tiger? Yeah? Is it the Indian leopard, the elephant, the cow, or the Bengal tiger? <laughs> the answer is... It's the Bengal tiger. Yeah? It's the tiger. Very good, Abbas. Not the cow, not the elephant, and not the leopard. Let's look at the leaderboard. <clears throat> Ooh, Yusuf, did you get this too? Good job, Yusuf. I'm glad the Peel District School Board education is working well here, you know, alhamdulillah. All right. That's the leaderboard going into the final question. And the final question... Oh no, I destroyed it? Oh no. I did it again. Leaderboard. Maybe it's not meant to be, you know? The last question was about me. <laughs> oh, I was expecting some treats after this one. Yeah, question 10, alhamdulillah. No, it's not talk, I'm talk. What is my... Oh, I have to hit enter. Never mind, wait a second. Haven't done this in a while, clearly. What is my favorite flavor of ice cream? Is it vanilla, strawberry, mango, or cookies and cream? If you're going to deliver, I really prefer Kawartha. <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah, I prefer Kawartha. Make sure it's frozen still. Is it vanilla, strawberry, mango, or cookies and cream? Answer is vanilla, yeah? That's my favorite flavor, good job, yeah? You can tell I'm a very plain guy, yeah, alhamdulillah. But that's my order of preference, by the way. If you're knowing, vanilla, strawberry, mango, and then cookies and cream. Yeah, Very nice. Let's look at the final leaderboard. You can take a print screen of that. Oh, so many people got it right. Lakers in trouble. I know. Let's make a dua for them. They are in trouble right now. Yeah. All right, gentlemen and ladies, brothers and sisters, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He hastens the return of our Imam, that He forgives the sins of our parents and loved ones, for those going through difficulty, that He end their difficulty, for those that have asked us to pray for them, Ya Allah, accept their hajat. Rabbana taqabba minna inna ka anta samiyul alim, wa tub alayna inna ka anta tawabur rahim. رحم الله من كرى سورة المباركة الفاتحة تسبقها الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد